welcome to the Human Broadcheck Podcast. Here we have inspiring stories worth spreading. I am your host, Karina Rosa Feigenberg. Lucky me, I do have another interesting person sitting next to me. His name is Shaft and he is from the UK, born and raised in London. Shaft, welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks wow. for having me. I was not born and raised in London, oh, but I moved there when I was 24. Okay, so you were born in Bangladesh then? No, uh, Hastings, which country? <laughs> I take that. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks so tell me, who are you and why are we both sitting here from a podcast? Well, my name is Shaft Din and uh, I'm in the business of uh, saving lives through The Sacred Art of Yoni Massage. That's my jam. Mm. <laughs> promising. I'm, promising. And I'm here to uh, just crack on with entertaining people into becoming enlightened. Okay. <laughs> What do you mean enlightened you, in that sense? Well, let me talk about entertainment. You've, you, have you ever seen the film Idiocracy? Yes. So that's where we're heading. <laughs> Okay, I so can that's, sign that. Yeah, so that's where we're heading. And <laughs> we are sitting in a public restaurant and there was a friend of Shaft and I Ooh, just I asked him see. Yeah. Spontaneously to join for the podcast as I as I as I love to do that. So um, she's coming back in, in a couple of minutes. She better be coming back. She better be coming back. That's got us. So uh, idiocracy, we're heading that way. The The world. I'm, I mean, I'm a I'm a unicorn. I'm a sacred sexual Jedi. I'm also an Aquarian. I can see how fucked this world is. It's a whole cosmic joke. We might as well be laughing along with it. So I might as well jump on the uh, the wave that is happening in the world, which is people are learning through watching reality TV shows, uh, learning through Netflix. So I might as well teach these very ancient practices coming from my people. And to be honest, it's been sold by white people and it's my technology and the white man is selling it back to us. Like yoga, ancient technology for restless eight-year-old boys. It's done by hot women with 10,000 people, Instagram followers. It's like, what? what how did this happen? And that's a multi-billion dollar industry. The wellness industry, like Gwyneth Paltrow and her group audience, is a multi-billion dollar industry. And all this technology is for my country, for my people. And, like, it didn't take long for the white man colonization and the British Raj to completely, like, brainwash the whole of India into thinking, okay, what you're doing is bad. We're going to destroy all your temples. We're going to take away all, your, all of your culture. And here's a missionary position. Fuck the Kama Sutra. Like, no, no, no tantra for you, no yoga for you. You guys are crazy. This is barbaric. Hundreds of years later, hi, we've got something that, that we want to sell to you. It's called yoga and tantra. So I'm here to reclaim my heritage unlock my DNA and like bring back Tantra to the modern world that's why I'm here there's not a lot of brown people teaching this stuff just so you know it's all white people it's a very interesting perspective when really I now is. zoom myself to Bangladesh you said your parents are retired yeah they right. left the UK and they are now back home how is Tantra and yoga viewed these days in Bangladesh it's, 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 it doesn't exist there because of a, it's, it's a Muslim country But it wasn't always a Muslim country. Like the the youngest religion is uh, Islam, so my heritage isn't Islamic; it's Hindu. But I'm also Islamic. But I also love all religions. So what I'm doing is frowned upon because in Bangladesh the Muslim uh, is is like a very strict about Muslim country. But they've achieved oneness. They literally did it. They've done it. They've, they've achieved oneness. Everybody thinks the same, feels the same. Like if my mum died and you replaced her with another Bangladeshi woman from Silet, you just swapped her, you have an, my mum again. <laughs> It's the same person. Uh, they're programmed in such a way that everyone has the same diseases, the same health problems, that, and they all have um, the same hopes and dreams for their children. And they say the same thing over and over and over again. 
If I now go into that, I would say it's not only happening in Bangladesh. My experience is, wherever I travel these days, the world is becoming more and more similar. Yeah. To find authenticity yeah. becomes more and more difficult. Do there you know is a kind of an it in these communities. <laughs> what kind of communities? Like the one we are. It's the spiritual communities. I fucking hate. Oh, this is a relief to hear that. Oh my god. Right now we are in a community. Uh -huh. I have to say that we are here in San Marcos in. Um, Guatemala. It's a it's very like going backwards here. I said this to my lover in Finland. I was like, if I come here, it's going to feel like I'm going backwards, and it's, it, that's what it is. I had the talk right at the beach this afternoon. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's a very special community. Getting out of that because the large majority of people are not living in communities like you can find in Ibiza, you can find them in Bali, you can find them it's in everywhere. Portugal. Right? I, I'm everywhere. trying to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I've been trying to get out for three weeks. But week. one has to say what you said before. It's a large industry. It's yeah. a large industry. What I can feel throughout the globe, people are longing for something, something they cannot find in the capitalism world anymore. So there is a I market. I can't wait to go back. To we'll go back to the UK. <laughs> to the, yeah, I want to go back to the city. <laughs> like I want to go back to the fucking city. I am done with flaky ass shakti's. I'm done with these my tantra is better than your tantra people. I'm done with people saying, hmm, you. You got problem, and maybe you should do vipassana. Have you done vipassana? <laughs> oh, you should do vipassana. Shadow work. Go into your shadows. There must be something. It's like shut the fuck up. But at the same time, you are in that market, right? Because yeah, I'm one hundred percent in that market. But I'm doing it in a completely different way. I'm being authentic because I'm more authentic than everyone else. Because getting to this question, what is, is authenticity? Shit. I just used it myself. So when do you feel? yourself being authentic and when can you feel you're playing because you're running this famous show what is it called the Good? shaft show yeah. check it out find me on instagram and youtube Ooh, yeah, hashtag the shaft show or shaft udin <laughs> See how good you are in that. So when can you feel you are the true self and when can you feel that you are a bit playing a role which sometimes you have to do in life as well Do you know what my favorite because I analyze like I'm an Aquarian. I've got a hyper-aware sense of self. I've got a hyper-aware sense of reality. I see the flaws and the loopholes in the matrix that we're in, and I exploit it. I also know myself in different fractions of myself, and the best version of myself is the one that you're getting now, mm. like the podcast guy. Because, <laughs> you know, you've given me permission to be myself. You, you're asking me really good questions. Outside of here, I'm just chaos. I'm just chaos running around, trying to have fun and find love. That's it. And when I saw you here, because, again, it's a hippie village, I saw you always surrounded being, like, with beautiful women. Always. You mentioned a word which I really <laughs> love. It's like lovers. Yeah, my lovers. So who are lovers? How do you define lovers? You come from a tantric back background. Huh? It's different than the world that you usually have in Munich, Berlin, mm. New York, the classical way, and maybe in London nonetheless. So who is a lover? Um, so I have three categories. Oh, should I answer the authentic thing yeah. first? I'll answer. Yeah. yeah. So I'll answer the authentic. Do I remember? Like I remember stuff. So, um... <laughs> The level of authenticity comes with the energy I feel when I'm speaking to someone. So you've given me permission to be myself in this podcast. So I like this version of myself. When I'm given a yoni massage, my client will see the highest, best version of myself because they're paying a lot of money for me to heal them. And that is when they meet Shiva. Like I'm channeling a, a, a Hindu god and I am in full divine presence to this woman. They're the people I like. Like, that's a version of Shaft. Like I said, outside of here, once this turns off, I would just go be running. I'd be chasing Shakti. I'd be trying to eat food. I'd be trying to find fun. Like, and then going to bed at 10 <laughs> while scrolling. I like that clearness. The clearness that you have. Mm. That answer. I know what... I know Where myself. Exactly, yeah. And there's different roles for different uh, parts of my being. Mm -hmm. But my mission in my life is to be, how can I be Shiva? How can I be the chef show every day? Because the guy I am in this restaurant is a mess. Like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm like, I'm a fucking human. Yes, I am a guru. But gurus are humans. Yes, I'm enlightened. I've had long periods of enlightenment. This isn't it. I'm a mess right now. I've had so much mental illness in my life, but I've found ways to cure myself and eradicate mental illness for my life but you know 
34 years of being batshit crazy and then just like eight years of not it's 34 years of like cellular conditioning to fall back to so i'm a human i'm a mess but i'm also a god talking of which lovers (laughs) i love 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 is my favorite thing and I have three categories because I work with vaginas, I work with dicks, I work with every part of the sexual experience uh, and I'm a, a Jedi when it comes to sexuality and Kama Sutra and all that stuff. So I could only get good at touching a woman's vagina through practice. So I need vaginas. That's how I got the, became the world's best because i got to do at least 50 sessions before I could start being a professional yoni masseuse. That's a lot of vaginas. Even lesbians haven't seen 50 vaginas. <laughs> and it's not in like a five minute fumble either. It's in like three to four hour or five hour sessions. That's a lot of dedication and discipline when it comes to be- becoming good at something. Over 10,000 hours of practice on vaginas. So I need tantra, tantra buddies. I need people to practice with. So these are like my friends who are doing the same thing as me. It's, it's like um, being in a band and you need to find someone to jam with. Sometimes you might fall in love with them, sometimes you won't. Majority of the time you won't, but sometimes you will. You just don't know. <laughs> then you've got your lovers. They're, they're your classic boyfriend and girlfriend. They're basically your girlfriend. That's it. They're your lovers. But you have one, you have two, you have three. It's all, they're all committed relationships. It doesn't, it's like having a best friend. You could always have one best friend and another best friend and another best friend. Your best friend is never going to say, but I feel this connection is really shallow. They're your best friend. You know them for life. And the only way to, to get depth and um, loyalty and commitment is dedicating time to these women. And that's what I do. I dedicate my time to these women because I don't really have a job. <laughs> so I just like... I like love. I love intimacy. This is why I'm surrounded by super hot, beautiful Shaktis who are devoted to me and love me because I'm a really nice guy. Hmm. I was thinking this afternoon about the complexity of a woman's mind. Oh my God, I'm dealing with Honestly, this right now. Honestly, I have no idea. As you as a man, you know, you tell me about those lovers. Large of them are women. How can you cope with that complexity? Because we are really not simple. I cannot even tell you the mind structure of my best friend. Yeah. So how can you deal with this? Is it like you put a lot of attention in the moment? I need and even a... yourself, you know, you have no idea what happens 10 hours later. What do you do? I need to not be in this community anymore, basically. This, like, I've been brainwashed in this... You talk about here, right, in, in San Marcos, this I'm community? I'm talking about spirituality. Okay, spirituality. Like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm done with the spiritual scene. I'm done with the goddess But believe me, those women are out there as well in the non-spiritual world. They just don't say, can you feel me? They say maybe something different. Maybe they have a business meeting and they have to hurry up with you. Mm. But there are still women with the same complexity of mind. Right? Well, actually, these because wo- I've been in the city now and I really like it in the city. Uh, they got a bit more foundation and groundedness. They're not... They haven't been trained to be horrible people. As in, what does that mean? They've been trained to be Kali. They've been trained to be these really uh, little girls who have tantrums if they're not met, seen or heard. And it's up to men to be these impeccable, impeccable space holders without taking their bullshit personally. After a while... You're going to take it personally if you're constantly using a man as an emotional dustbin. And it's very tiring. It's fucking tiring. It's not fun anymore. But to be fair, me as a woman, I have to say, you need also to have a lot of space with the other gender, right? It's not as if men would be perfect. Um, as I think I said it in one of the other talks, is the most sexiest thing about man is not about how much money he has, it's not about presence. the body, exactly, it's the consciousness he has. Yeah. It's not even only the presence, I would say, this makes a lot of the connection, yeah? but it's also the consciousness, the, the possibility to reflect. It's beautiful, not just one thought after the other, to allow time in between. Not a lot of human beings are there. 
Like for me, I'm done with the goddess empowerment industry because I've been <laughs> I've been in it for eight years. Like you do one thing over and over again, you see the dark side of it. And what I see in this industry and in the spiritual community with these goddesses is victims helping victims. There is no tantra teacher out there who's perfect, including myself. But a lot of them are batshit crazy. I'm dating half of them, and they're. They're just ungrounded. How do I know this? Because I've been in a city and I've been women who are not that. <laughs> There's another world out there. I call them the tantric CEOs. Like women who are grounded, who have a business, who are out of their trauma cycles and have an impact in communities and mothers. I like dating. Do you know what? I like dating mothers because they got their shit together. <laughs> and they have a car and they could drive me around. <laughs> And mothers might also, my impression is when you're a mother, I'm not, but you have already this child and the yeah, child gives you a lot of, of love. For sure. <laughs> That's awesome. But maybe she's not putting so much expectations vis-a-vis -vis men, right? That is what I would, would say. If you're a mother, you're busy. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you already have part and of the And they love value thing. men like me. Like they really value men like me. I'm not like another throwaway Shiva. This, this one's but you but you're what then for them for the mother type of, of women How in, do you feel in the in cities I, in the in the in the cities yeah. I'm seen I'm valued I'm seen as a guru okay. I'm seen as a like someone who has done the work okay which is easy because look at you how you look you look already crazy you look like yeah. oh who's that man right so you of course you get interest and one has to say if you stay too long in this like really spiritual world you really become also a bit crazy so yeah, you feeling crazy. that need getting out back to the normal world yeah i need to take me to a city i can't wait to go back to london i can't wait to do the shaft show in a city where people appreciate me and actually see me as a, a man of value here no one gives a shit what i have to say here like i the amount of young kids that come up to me and tell me how to live my life is 100 all of the time <laughs> It's like, guys, I'm a fucking old guy. I look super young, but I'm I'm an old guy and I'm an Aquarian. Don't tell me how to live my life. <laughs> If you would have a son, what would be your best recommendation when it comes on how to handle a vagina? We roughly spoke mm. before we before our talk. How old would And I said be? a vagina massage, a real good one, is unbelievable. Yeah. I think neither yeah neither men know about that how much power it brings and also pleasure for the other part neither women because I think it's totally underestimated what we have as powerful organ there right there are so many emotions hidden and sensations it's unbelievable so getting back to the question what would be the answer to your to your son when it comes to how to handle best vaginas mm. how old is the son up to you to decide you know, <laughs> okay right <laughs> I know yeah because they could be 13 or 8 okay generic son <laughs> <laughs> the advice I would give to my generic son would be um, okay We're gonna think he, I'm going to think he's a young kid. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's really relevant to know what language to use. Um, so his name would be uh, Sky. Oh, I love it. Sky Shiva Udin. So, Sky, come here. So, uh, I know you're growing up pretty fast. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's my son. <laughs> And you're starting to get your girlfriends at school now. And uh, you are starting to explore, and that's a beautiful thing. And your bodies are going to be growing up pretty fast, and you're going to be feeling pleasure in certain places. And I want you to understand that the way you feel pleasure might not be the same as how everyone else feels pleasure. And it doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl. And uh, I want you to uh, be aware that you have something amazing and powerful that is your sexual energy and your sexuality and you are free to express it but not everyone might express it the same way as you so always check in with other people and ask what they like because what you like might be different from what they like and just be 
uh, playful and curious and explore with someone that you trust and love. Uh, make sure you feel safe and comfortable to uh, explore with a special someone. Because it might not be a boy or a girl, because it might be, you know, we're, we're moving away from heteronormative, monogamous lifestyles, because that, that paradigm's gone. So, yeah, I would be expressing it like that, so it's kind of like gender it's really neutral. It's really beautiful. Which brings me to another question. You have worked with so many women. My experience is women have problems in stating what they want. <laughs> yeah. It's unbelievable. Even the strongest businesswoman can be like weak and bad and don't claim their rights, their pleasure. It's difficult for men then as well because how should they know? It, it also applies vice versa. I'm not a man. I have no idea how your dick works, right? So you have to teach me. So what would you say you have worked with those many women and you have given them tantric uh, yoni massages? And you said before they were healing that touch down there. Because maybe a woman was not touched in that way, never before. There are women out there who had never an orgasm. Yeah, maybe you were the one who provided them first time in their lives. What could you see? What was your best takeaway in that practice where you have seen, well, there is something moving with the women. And it's really shaking their whole body and their mindset. Well, the thing about all women is they're so completely... Unique. Unique? <laughs> yes. So, um, like, it's so tricky to... to like, all I could do is do the same method over and over again. All I'm doing is a method. I'm no... Like, I'm... Literally, I'm pressing buttons. That's it. Over and over again. One woman will have a life-changing experience where she has a past life regression where she sees herself as a blue alien on another planet. Another woman will see the most deepest, darkest trauma about being the middle child and thinking her mum hates her. And another woman will feel nothing and will feel really shit about herself. And another woman will be multi-orgasmic and squirting and doing everything that you could ever dream of and more. And I've done exactly the same thing. So it's, it's so difficult to say, like, it's, it's just so unique for every different woman, this journey. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's impossible to say anything. Because I like that honesty. That, I like that a lot. So at the end, you can try. Yeah, I'm just in the same method. That's yeah. it. I, and go at the to, end, it's individualistic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go, go to sacredsexualawakening.com. There's a thing. And basically, I, I have to get my clients to invest time into reading it because that's what they're going to get. Nothing more. They'll get Shiva presents and there's a, a set list that I do. And that's it. That's all I do. For those who have asked, what the hell is a yoni massage? What did this guy... What's he doing? Is there anything you can um, describe here? Yeah, it's a. This on my packages, there's four stages. So the first one is the trauma release. The second one is the educational process. The third one is the juicy one, my favorite one, the Shakti surrender session. And the third, fourth one is the initiation. So everything I've taught, they get to learn, and then they can make any man tantric. It, they could create their own tantric experiences and they could get a man to do whatever they want but it includes of course the corporal the body touch right you are working i'm hands in and i'm hands, hands on. on yeah so the first one is uh, a sim simple process called trigger point release i'm literally going inside the yoni and it's not i'm going inside the yoni straight away I'm uh, massaging them, I'm preparing them, I'm relaxing their nervous system, I'm saying key words to make them feel more relaxed and feel safe. Um, what is your intention for this uh, work, de -arming? What are your fears, what are your desires, what are your boundaries, do you have any uh, sexually transmitted infections, what would this session mean to you? So creating this container, getting them to sign a form, they have to like pay the invoice and like it's expensive. So it's like a whole process and then I've got to interview them, make sure they're not batshit crazy because... I'm using my body and my home to help them heal. So my safety is my highest priority here. And this is why I've had incredible clients. Um, and then by that time, they've, they've gone through this process already. We've built a level of trust. And that's what women need, safety, to open up. 
Me as a man. How can you know? I imagine you have maybe traumatized. Maybe you know that you don't want a man normally touch your vagina, whatever, right? And then he, she comes to your place, and then she has to get undressed. Um, at the same time, she knows it's a kind of professional relationship between the two of you. What did you learn to make those women that have that are not in the spirit of world where you maybe show more of your body in general? What 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 is your way of making them, beside of what you said before, that frame, feel comfy. Is there anything where you say you, you realize that's the best or that worked to is open he, up? Because at the end you can also feel like the vagina is closed sometimes. Yeah. You need to... Is it the touch? Is it is it like music that comes along? Like every woman is, diff woman is every different. Every woman is right? different, yeah. So you have a... It's, it's, it's a minefield. Like you said, women are women and they don't even know what they want. <laughs> But I'm just doing a, a method and I'm present. That's it. That's the presence. That's the presence. Just through, my, just through my relaxed nervous system, having a safe container of they're not going to get anything else apart from me doing this method is enough for them to relax. Also, we've had a conversation and, I, you know... I, I'm a nice guy, so like I'm just like having fun all the time. But this is serious work. This is, you know, d their deepest, darkest fears and traumas. And there's oh, this. Yes. If you go down there, you're so vulnerable. Yeah. Exactly. It's like I'm I mean, this is a part here in society. You're cl it's closed yeah. up, you know. Not even between I'm friends. You're talking their about wound. that. Yeah. This is crazy. The level of work that I'm doing is is so deep and so profound that humanity is catching up like Gwyneth Paltrow she stole my idea I had the dream of doing sex love group in 2017 at the height of my fame I got ill but it's funny I've seen it as well the thing that she shows there is normal and spiritual work it's so normal for it's us, so yeah. normal for us yeah. and there it's a bit like hyped but it's good it brings it it's to great. you yeah, yeah. it brings it to you another And this, this is where I want to be. I want to do this work on the highest level. I want to be on stage doing this work. I want to be giving a double... I can see that you love the stage. Yeah, I love oh, the man. stage, yeah. I mean, I... I hope I get a ticket once when you're so <laughs> famous for running through the roof. Well, in, in Helsinki, I did the, the grand finale of the Shaft show. It was a double yoni massage, like a simultaneous yoni massage. It's hard enough giving one person, two women, two women two at the time. same time. Yeah. Really? And you can share your attention. Of I would be course. jealous if there would be another woman lying next to me. I'm polyamorous, so I'm able to do anything. And I'm a dancer. Doesn't help. I would be jealous. Yeah, so through the power of mirror neurons and presence, <laughs> I'm able to make all women feel included. So that's, that's my thing. Inclusion. Because I've been fucked over by so many women that I don't want to do that to women. Fucked over. What happened? Think of all the worst things that could ever happen. Physical abuse, violence, everything. I've had that to me from women it's now a private question we said up front you say where your limit is mm -hmm. do you think it happened also with your you have a sister and your mother could you feel that in that relationship as well or do you talk now about girlfriends or lovers when you were older uh, sorry like you, you said this kind of uh, abuse mm -hmm. did it happen also in your family family relationships or did it happen later on It, was, it happened later. I mean, my mom beat me up, but, you know, I love my mom. She's my best friend as well. It's just, it's just a no... If, if you've seen a film... I go into this because this is what we said before. I heard about that your dad beat you up, yeah? yeah? But if And you managed film, to talk to him. He's my best friend now. He's my hero. Yeah, I fucking love that guy. So you managed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, if you've seen the film East is East, that was my childhood. Like, that's just like a normal Bangladeshi family. You get beaten up for being, like, crazy and undisciplinable and um and it's just discipline like you know in sweden obviously it's illegal to hit hit your kids and they can't understand that i was beaten but it's just normal in my culture so yeah men working together with men you do this as well right i do work with men yeah is there a difference when you heal man when in or in comparison to women what is the difference between the two work styles um i i get emotional i cry 
when well, you work with men. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is it because you feel the reflection? Is, is there something? I don't know why I cry, but I cry. Um, and it's not professional for me to cry because, you know, someone's like, I would never cry if a woman when I'm holding space for a woman but when I'm holding space for a man I'm, I'm just crying I don't know why and I, I like their stories every story is terrible like imagine the worst story I've had um, women who have been kidnapped taken to a forest and raped and badly killed and they survived by uh, a family going past and they were able to run away and escape and I'm able to help them overcome that sexual trauma so, oh thank you very much <laughs> Thank you, getting the recognition I finally deserve <laughs> in the saving life business. That's that's what I do. Um, and then I hear men's story as well, and there there is the same stuff. It's like the sexual trauma, and the abuse, uh, the pedophilia, the, um, the yeah. It's just like it's it's all horrific, but for some reason I feel more pain because I'm a man when I work with men. And this is this is a thing about men. There's a reason why they're dying more than women. They're dying. They're just dying. There's more women in the spiritual community and the transformation community and the tantra community. And men aren't around. And uh, the suicide rates of men are really high. Lack of connection. We just don't know how to express ourselves. Um, the amount of sexual abuse that happens to young boys and, and men is quite high. We just don't know how to express ourselves. Women are good at expressing themselves. And I feel that you have an advantage of um, being able to tell people because you know how to communicate it better than us. It's like when women say, I want you to feel me. It's like... We're finding it hard enough to feel ourselves. I don't know how I'm going to feel you. I don't... I agree. At the same time, I have to say, women talk themselves to death. Yeah. So, it's good to talk. We know how to be talkative. But sometimes we're not producing anything. You go more into action. There is this masculine energy that is making things to proceed. I think maybe this is also the reason why a lot of women just stick with their victim role, mm. right? I still view an ideal world where men and women are viewed in the particularities. I do not see that two gender are equal. We are different and I love that. But I can see it becomes more and more complex. A lot of men don't know how to make compliments. They are afraid of giving compliments, yeah, I'm, right? I'm scared of... I have been brainwashed by the female empowerment yeah. industry. If if I give a compliment to someone, I will be seen as a sexual predator or a creep in this in, uh, in this environment. So I I just stay well away from we people. Need this game nope. Those so you guys have made it. it so bad for us that you will only get the energy from people who are out of this bubble, and you'll just get literally creeps coming onto you because they they don't care. You won't get good guys like us because we're petrified of you women just in case we're seen as these sleazy rapists. So we stay well away and oh, and hang out with people that we, we know. <laughs> One of his lover just is back. <laughs> Cindy Crawford of San Marcos. So here we go with another question. Has two of two and then three final ones. Yeah. Jealousy. Jealousy. Polyamour, jealousy. Mm -hmm. What is polyamour for you? Does it mean like you have more lovers at the same time? You practicing love to more partners at the same time? What is polyamour for you? Okay, so my dream scenario is to be in a relationship with her and be in a relationship with her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that's literally my dream. Wow. Yeah. And they're not even compatible together, probably. <laughs> But... I will have a completely individual relationship with her and a completely individual relationship with her. Thing is, I got so much time, but she's busy at the market doing tarot and she's busy somewhere else doing yoga. So they, it just doesn't clash. What I do prefer, though, is if all my Shaktis knew each other and we all hang out together. And Does this work in reality? Maybe it's here because it's a spiritual a island city. bubble. In, in a city, city like London, does I've it work like this? It works even better in a city. You could have more. 
Like in a city, you could have seven lovers because like everyone's busy and everyone's got a job. I don't have a job. <laughs> jealousy. It's an ego thing. But still, is there? Is it possible to not have jealousy in there? So I, I doubt, to be honest. so I have a trauma, and that's my best friends sleeping with my girlfriends. Girlfriends. Yeah. So I only usually choose one guy to be a, my my best and closest friend, and he often has sex with my girlfriend, fiance, um, monogamous rela relationships, or polyamorous. Same pattern over and over again. So my only trauma is that one trauma. So that jealousy. So I have to say, don't be intimate with my my friends now. You could have sex with anyone else; doesn't matter. Like she's always talking about her boys. She's got thirteen on the go. <laughs> And do, do you know what I do? I support her. It's like great. <laughs> It's amazing. Not a problem. Question for you: How's jealousy for you? How can you handle that if you know that? Oh no, she's no she's answer not like me. here. She's no not answer. Like, <laughs> like I will talk about this all day. It's so not, we profit not from your lovely smile. <laughs> Cindy how <laughs> how was the vagina saving your life? It taught me presence, and through the vagina, I found truth. Like it's a meditation practice. It could have happened with a dick as well, or not. It could have happened with any other practice. Like I just chose vaginas. Mm -hmm. It could have happened with vipassana. It could have happened with some kind of this makes you present practice. I just chose the juiciest, most funnest one because it's easier to be present with someone else, especially when someone's holding space or uh, you're holding space. It's it's just easier to heal with other people. It takes people to heal people. And this whole goddess empowerment industry and the whole spiritual community of you need to be by yourself. You need to take yourself out of humanity. You need to love yourself. You need to be isolated. You need, you need to be celibate. This doesn't help human connection. It's causing more division. Um, there's all this slut shaming around polyamory as well. It's like I can feel your energy, and like if you take too many dicks, you're gonna be. It's like, hang on, this sounds like slut shaming. So I I I'm getting the fuck out of it. I'm going back into a city, and I am not coming back <laughs> until I need a holiday and like you know need healing because <laughs> you know there is, there is a place for this stuff and it does help you heal. Three last questions. What's the most unpleasant word you've ever heard or spoken out? Unpleasant word is uh, it's my favorite word though. I love the word gash. Gash. I love the word gash. What would you recommend to a woman who says, "I don't love my yoni"? I would recommend that you do a very powerful practice: look in the mirror and look at your yoni and say three things that you appreciate about her. And if your yoni could speak to you right now, what would she say? Because she's fucking intelligent. You've got womb wisdom, and I've got conscious cock. They should hug. What was the craziest place you've ever danced? Huh. I mean, I used to go around the world dancing at Burning Man events. Oh, Burning Man! So probably 2012, on top of Chicken Itza, uh, when the world was going to end in Mexico, I was dressed as a unicorn, and I met the guy from Game of Thrones, one of the guys from Game of Thrones, and uh, he gave me loads of drugs. <laughs> Shaft, it was a real pleasure to having had you here. Thank you so much for your openness, for your authenticity, authentic, you complex word. Say it for me. Authenticity. Did, so did you think I was authentic or is it a show? You no, know, really. I really appreciate that. I really, it was a bit worried at the beginning when I saw you with your lovers around and the shaft show and all that. But now I could really, I really enjoyed the talk because I could feel you. Yeah, because this is like a nice version of myself. Yes. Once this turns off, I I'm just going to be running around I being <laughs> chaos. And it was so beautiful and telling like you can be that and that person depending mm. on which position Please, which role I'm you're fully in. enlightened but i'm also a human <laughs> like everyone has a capacity to be enlightened like i i just experienced longer periods than a normal person and i can't wait for that period again fuck i hate this period and i can't <laughs> wait to see you in london <gasps> then in your show i will be there shaft thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you <laughs> To our podcast listener, it was a beautiful one hour here with Shaft. See you soon. Don't forget to subscribe and like and share. Good night.